Hi again, Mike Mazzalongo here with BibleTalk.tv. This is the series 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You, a small group study for mature Christians. And this is session number 10, our final session in the series entitled Perseverance. As I said, this is our last session in the series. So before giving you the final step to the new spiritual you, which ties everything together, let's review the first nine steps we've studied and discussed. Now, the purpose and reward of spiritual disciplines. The main idea that we have tried to get our spirits around is that our personal goal as Christians is to become more like Christ in every area of our lives. This is the substance of the new spiritual you. You become more like Jesus Christ, and these spiritual disciplines facilitate that. But have nothing to do with worldly fables fit only for old women. On the other hand, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. For bodily discipline is only of little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things since it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. And that passage, by the way, is 1 Timothy 4, verses 7 to 8. Here, Paul explains that Christ-likeness is godliness, because God in human form is Jesus, and so therefore to be like Christ is to be like God, since Christ is God. Note that he says, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness in that passage in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Not simply disciplining the body, as in working out, but getting the body and flesh under control. Not depriving the body, that's asceticism, which does not accomplish much spiritually in Christ. What he means is the discipline to train the spirit within you so that you are able to enjoy the promise or the results that come from this kind of spiritual training regimen. This is how it works. First, you have spiritual training, and that equals godliness or Christ-likeness. Godliness equals the experience of God. And then the experience of God equals the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, and patience. Afterwards, Godliness perfected equals eternal life in the world to come. So someone might ask, why spiritual discipline? The answer, spiritual discipline develops godliness and Christlikeness within us, which in turn produces the fruit of the Spirit, which in turn provide us with a first taste of the experiences of eternal life. It is the means and not the end. The more godly I become, the more I am able to experience the existence that awaits me after death. Why is this worth striving for, you say? Well, the more confident I become about life after death, the less I fear living a godly life here and leaving this place when the time comes. All right, so let's review the 10 spiritual disciplines. Godliness, then, is developed by exercising spiritual disciplines, not just physical disciplines. So far, we've looked at nine spiritual disciplines that help cultivate godliness in us as faithful Christians. Now, the foundation was personal discipline, without which the others are not possible. So the first discipline to cultivate is intimacy, a conscious drawing nearer to God by conforming our lives to his will and way. In the pursuit of godliness, we are continually drawing nearer to him, an ongoing action. The second discipline, simplicity. Getting rid of the things that hamper our relationship with God, both physical and spiritual. Simplicity is constantly making room for God in our lives. Disciplines three and four were stillness, and solitude, making the time to be alone and quiet before God. It is not stillness and solitude of the body. It is stillness and solitude of the heart before the Lord. Discipline number five, surrender. Learning to let go and let God lead your life. The more we surrender our fears, our plans, sorrows, people, failures to God, the more he surprises and blesses us. 
Discipline number six, prayer. Calling out to God, not for things, but for the knowledge of his will. The answer to this kind of prayer is what brings peace. Discipline number seven, humility. Knowledge of what God has done for us produces gratitude, and gratitude is expressed in humility. Humility is expressed by sitting on the urge to promote self, standing up on behalf of others, and bowing before God. Discipline number eight, self-control. The discipline of self-control is the battle over who will dominate our lives, the spirit or the flesh. And this war is fought in three second battles. Discipline number nine is sacrifice. Sacrifice is giving up the urge to save or to gratify self in the interest of another. To sacrifice because of Christ is the truest and highest manifestation of Christ-like character. And discipline number 10 is perseverance. Now, we didn't do a session on this step or discipline until now because perseverance is the companion of all the other disciplines. The dictionary defines this word to mean to continuously try hard in spite of obstacles and difficulties. The Greek word proskartoresis, sometimes translated by the English word steadfastness, meant to be devoted to standing ready. Paul, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, says that we should be on the alert with all perseverance. Peter, uh, on the other hand, explains the stepping stones to the highest virtue, Christian love, but note what discipline he mentions just before godliness, the virtue that we have been studying and aspiring to. He says, Now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence knowledge, and in your knowledge self-control, and in your self-control perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Now, my point with all of this is that we must persevere in cultivating each of these steps or disciplines in order to perfect them. In other words, they become a natural part of our Christian character, and we must persevere in order to maintain them or fall to the ever-present temptations of this world. Ten steps to the new spiritual you, which will be a person who will be able to serve God as Christ did. Again, the scripture says, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. And a person who will be able to love others as Christ did, John says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you, John chapter 15, verse 3. So this is who the new spiritual you will become and be able to do. Well, that's the end of our series. I hope that these lessons have helped you in your pursuit of godliness, and I encourage you to review these steps from time to time in order to stay spiritually motivated and continually growing in Christ. I pray to see you uh, another time in another series. Bye-bye for now. Question number one. Which of the disciplines do you find the easiest to practice or implement in your life? Why? Question number two. Which of the disciplines have created the greatest changes in your life? In what way? Question number three. If you were to teach this course, would there be steps that you would add or delete? Which ones and why? Question number four, in your opinion, which is the most difficult step or discipline to maintain? Why? Question number five, give a brief testimonial about how this course has changed your life in Christ for the better.